Growing up, I used to read National Geographic and watch their documentaries and wonder how on earth anyone got those jobs. It seemed to me like something out of reach for normal people, like whoever was making those things must be somehow special. Look ahead to now though, and I've worked for National Geographic on at least 10 different projects, and they're one of my most regular clients. In fact, my first ever TV job was for National Geographic, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about how that happened and three lessons you can take away from my experience. Because trust me, I'm not special, and if I can shoot for them, so can you. Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth, documentary cinematographer and filmmaker. And on this channel, I teach the skills I've learned over 10 years working as a documentary filmmaker and photographer. Over the course of my career, first as a photographer and then later as a filmmaker, I've worked with all different branches of National Geographic, from the TV channel, to the online magazine, to the branded content division. I've probably worked with National Geographic more than almost any other client. And all of that started with one single job. Like I said, they were the first real client I had as a documentary shooter. And I don't think it's all that normal to start out with someone as big as Nat Geo. Actually, the job was never meant for me in the first place. And I only got into it because of an army truck and a broken leg, but more on that later. Now, I just said that when I got the job, I'd never shot on a real TV show. And that's true, but I had been a professional photojournalist for five years and that experience is a big part of the reason why I was hired. Even though stills and documentary are quite different to shoot in terms of sequencing and movement, I already knew cameras inside and out. I knew how to expose images properly, how to make good frames, and maybe most importantly, how to interact and gain the trust of people while filming. And so even before I tell you how I got on the job in the first place, that's the first piece of advice I can give on how to land your dream client. You have to practice as much as you can before you come into contact with them. If they'd called me up and asked if I was available before I had all that camera experience, there would have been no way I could have done the job. In fact, if I hadn't had all that experience, they never would have reached out to me to begin with. They were already well aware that I was more of a photographer than a cinematographer at that point when they hired me, but they decided that my past experience was relevant enough that they'd take a chance on me. So whatever you're setting out to do, make sure you practice as much as possible. It could be taking stills, it could be shooting short docs about your friends and family, or even shooting wedding videos that tell a story. Whatever skills you can bring to the table ahead of time, increase your chances of getting that call. And if you think your dream client is gonna give you a chance without you knowing at least the basics, you're gonna be very disappointed. Okay, so how did I actually get the first job? Well, late at night, I was sitting in my apartment in Mexico City editing photos when my phone rang. It was my friend Ulises, and right away he said, hey man, you owe me for this one, but do you want to come and work for National Geographic right now? Uli was, and still is, an amazing producer who specializes in helping big media organizations run productions in Mexico. And we first met when I actually hired him to help me with a self-funded personal photography project about water shortages in Mexico City. We became really good friends, and I actually spent my first Christmas in Mexico with his family. Nacho had hired Uli to help them gain access to some difficult areas in Mexico, uh, mostly locations dealing with the drug trade and cartels, so not really places you just want to roll up into unannounced. They flew down to Mexico from the US, and on the first day of shooting, their B-cam operator broke his leg while jumping out of a truck. It was too last minute to find a replacement and then fly them down from New York, so they asked Uli if they had any people he could recommend. And lucky for me, he thought of me. And that's the second thing you can apply to your own career. Networking is insanely important. The truth is that there are a lot of really good shooters out there in the world and a ton of really talented people. But a documentary film crew is like a small traveling family and people wanna make sure they are hiring crew that they can get along with. Preferably, they'll hire their friends or people they've been working with before. And that's why you see so many DP, director, repeat collaborations in Hollywood. Working with new people is always a risk. And even if the people you already know and trust aren't available or they happen to break their leg on a shoot, the next best thing are recommendations from people you trust. When the field producer needed to find a replacement camera operator, she didn't start Googling or checking Instagram. Instead, she asked Ulises first. In this business, it's maybe even more about who you know as what you know. So make sure you're getting to know as many people as possible. You never know where they'll end up. All right, so I got the call at around 10 p.m. And of course, when they asked if I was available, I said yes right away. I'd wanted to work for Nat Geo for ages. And if I was being honest, I probably would have done the job for free if they'd asked. The problem was the cameras they were using. I think they were C300s. I'd never even seen one, let alone shot with one of them. From my photography background though, I knew how cameras worked and I'd shot enough video to know the basic settings, 
but a fully rigged cinema camera with all those buttons and audio controls was a totally new experience for me. I was terrified. Of course, I didn't tell them any of this. I just said yes to the gig. And at 4 a.m. that night, a car showed up to drive me to the shoot location in Acapulco. The whole way down, I was like frantically watching YouTube videos on how to operate the C300. By the time I got there, I at least knew where the most important buttons were. I definitely wasn't a C300 Pro or anything, and I had to ask a lot of questions over the course of the shoot, but I learned on the fly and the gig went really well. And that's the third takeaway from my experience. When an opportunity comes your way, you need to jump on it, even if it's outside your comfort zone. It's amazing how obvious this sounds, but how often people will turn away from big opportunities because it's either too much work or they're too scared to fail. When I was just finishing school, I watched this happen to a buddy of mine. He went to journalism school and had always wanted to be a music journalist. And one night while we were sitting around watching a movie, really not doing anything, an editor called him to say that one of his reporters was sick and asked if he could fill in to interview a super famous metal band. Not gonna say who it was, but it was a massive band and it could have been a huge opportunity. But to my total surprise, I listened as my friend made up a weak excuse and hung up the phone. I know it was late and we were comfortable on the couch and to rush out without doing any preparation to do an interview would have been really intimidating. I get why it wasn't ideal, but I couldn't believe he didn't want to go for it. Maybe unsurprisingly, my friend never got another call from that editor. He never became a music journalist and actually ended up working in an office. And there's nothing against office work, but it's hard not to think about what might have happened to his career if he'd taken that opportunity when it came. Now, there's a difference between flat out lying about what you're capable of and working outside your comfort zone. And I'm not telling you to take jobs that you know you can't deliver on. If you tell someone you can do a job and then you totally blow it, that might be worse than not taking the job at all. I mean, I wouldn't tell someone I could DP a major Hollywood movie tomorrow, though with some practice and experience, I might be able to get to that level. And likewise, you shouldn't outright lie about something that's out of your league. Believe me, I've also tried that and it's not pretty when they find you out. Really early on in my career, I was almost thrown off a set once for telling the DP I had substantial camera assistant experience just to get hired. And then in the morning, he asked me to grab like an Apple box and a C-stand and I had no idea what either of those things were. He was not impressed and I barely made it through the day. I think the sweet spot is one level above what you're comfortable with. Something that you're pretty sure you can do even if you've never done it. Maybe that could be stepping up from a camera assistant position to a B-cam operator or taking on a car commercial when you normally shoot music videos. It's not a very technical measurement, but the point is you should have the raw abilities to make it happen, but not be afraid to say yes to something new, even if it's a little bit scary. Okay, back to the story. For over a week, we traveled around Mexico, filming with drug cartels, investigating heroin growing operations, and interviewing narco experts. It was an amazing first shoot, and it was that job that convinced me I wanted to move away from photography and pursue documentary filmmaking full time. The main DP of the show and I got along really well, and after the shoot wrapped, he actually brought me along on a bunch of other jobs over the next few years and helped me get the rest of my career going. See, I told you networking mattered. Seriously though, that job was the start of my whole life as a documentary filmmaker. And without those three things I mentioned, practice, networking, and working outside my comfort zone, it never would have happened. So as you start to build and develop your own careers, think about how you can give yourself the best possible chance of landing a dream client by doing those same things. Your story probably won't be the same as mine, but if you do those things for long enough, I promise something is gonna happen. Hope you liked that video, and if you found that one interesting, you might like this one about another lucky break I got when I got my first photo on the front page of the New York Times. See ya. That's just love I would never let you down That's just love